All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Agency Freedom Podcast. We help you achieve freedom in every aspect of your business. Our topic for today is what to do when you are attacked, what to do when you come under fire. Uh, it might be a one-star Google review. It might be someone bashing you in the comment section on social media. It may be someone backdooring you uh, with a prospect or someone that you're trying to take away from an incumbent and the incumbent uh, pulls some dirty tricks or some way to, to attack your credibility in the marketplace. Um, let me go ahead and do some, what is, let's see, battle music here. So I woke up uh, one morning, uh, this is back a couple of months ago, and I had a message from one of my friends it was like, hey, have you seen Facebook this morning? And I said, no, um, I, I haven't been on there. Uh, what's going on? He's like, you're going to want to get in the investor group. And I found out that one of our former clients had decided to put us on blast uh, for failing to cancel their policies and uh, saying that we hadn't canceled them for months, that we were not listening to them, basically that we suck at our job and that we were being unethical and, and difficult. Now, mind you, this guy um, is a, a moderator in the largest group uh, of investors that we have here in the area. And man, it was, it was a, a panic button kind of situation because we get a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of business from that group. And we are absolutely the dominant player uh, for investors in that group. We probably write two or 300 properties uh, a year just out of that one group. Uh, it's, it's fantastic for us. So I go into full what the heck is going on here mode and come to find out that things happened exactly as they were supposed to. Uh, but there were a couple of missing pieces on a on a uh, one of the entities that was not canceled the way that it was supposed to. And we dug through emails and found out that the other agent, the new agent, had not communicated a couple of pieces uh, that needed to be canceled. So of course, we go back in there and we backdate and we make it right. And we report back that everything has been done exactly as it's supposed to be. And there were two missing pieces and now they're good. This is like, I don't know, July or something. Um, you know, early July. Fast forward about, let's see, when was it? It was first week of October. I'm sitting at a trade show, a roofing contractor's trade show, and I get a call from this individual. And he jumps straight into cussing me and shouting at me. And I'm literally on the trade floor. I'm mean, at the, the, the trade show booth floor. I'm surrounded by my people at uh, this, this roofing trade show. And he just goes at me about, I'm demanding a refund, you guys, da 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 da. I'm, I'm totally blindsided here. I have no idea what happened. And I'm trying to figure out what on earth is going on. He references an automated email that our CRM sent him. And it turns out the automated email from our CRM was referencing a previous policy address or property address that had been canceled literally months and months and months ago. And he flew all the way off the handle without reading the content of the email, without checking to see if anything had actually been taken out of his account. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. And all of this happens while I'm standing on a trade show floor trying to keep my cool and not just full out lose it on this guy. And, and the end result was he was completely wrong. Nothing was taken out of his account. There was no refund due and everything had been done exactly as we're supposed to do it. Exhale and scene. What do I talk about this with you guys for? What is the point of unpacking my dirty laundry with stuff that we had to deal with and, you know, blood pressure spikes and walking around with my, with my head about to fall off my shoulders for a couple of hours back in October? It is because there is a right way and a wrong way to respond when you are attacked. And there's three lessons, three lessons that we have to learn uh, anytime something like this goes down. And one of them is 
something that we should be doing anyway, but especially when it comes time to deal with an unhappy client or an unhappy prospect, maybe to some extent, but I'm more talking about someone who's closer than a prospect, someone who is doing business with you or has done business with you. Because the most important thing is that we have to close the loop. We have to close the loop. Every process needs accountability at the end of the process to make sure that things were done correctly. And to be perfectly candid, we failed to close the loop. We allowed the new agent for this account that was a mutual separation in January of this year. We couldn't stand this guy. He couldn't stand us. It was just a bad fit all the way around. Um, we're just a really bad fit. Uh, the kind of agent that he wants is not the agent that we are and the kind of client that we need to be working with to have the scale and the volume that we do. He wasn't. He's, he's a lot of hand-holding, personal phone calls, really high-touch client. And we failed to move on from him correctly. We did not close the loop. We didn't put a bow on top and make sure that every little thing was done correctly before we put the thing on the shelf and moved on. We allowed an other agent to determine our success in the client's eyes. If we would have closed the loop, if we would have made it sure every little thing was done correctly and double checked everything, this would never have been a thing because we would have uncovered the fact that the other agent failed to reply to certain requests that were made. So those requests were never fulfilled. Technically, it's the fault of the other agent not our fault, but the insured doesn't know that. All they see is Riskwell didn't cancel my policies. So our failure to circle back and make sure that every little thing is done correctly with accountability meant that the insured thought that we had dropped the ball when in fact we didn't. But that doesn't matter because the perception is that we did. And the point that I make is you've got to close the loop. You always have some kind of accountability at the end of a process to make sure that the loop gets closed before you put the thing on the shelf. And the second, the second goes right along with it. Do I have any, I don't have any whoosh sound effects. I'm gonna have to get a whoosh sound effect back in or on my board here so I can press the little button and go to the next topic. The second point I'm gonna make here is that there is something to learn from everybody. Everybody, even a jerk who calls me out of the blue, cussing me and raise my blood pressure because he read an email subject that was incorrectly sent from an automated CRM, did no further checking, didn't even read the body of the email, calls me and flies all the way off the handle. Even someone that difficult, there's truth to be learned because the simple fact here is if we had done our job proactively and closed the loop, there would have never been any opportunity for a extremely frustrating former client to have any reason to call and say, you need to give me a refund, dot, dot, dot. Every single complaint has something for you to learn because whether that person is wrong or not, it doesn't really matter because you can still improve because something happened, even if they're completely unreasonable, a complete jerk, they're just an absolute heel of a human being. You can still learn from what they're saying because their perception is that you failed in some way. You one star reviewed in some way. And when we leave things up to chance, when we just ignore someone and go, oh, F that guy, they're just ridiculous, they're immature, they're blah, 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 whatever, whatever sort of brushing off you want to do, I would encourage you to not do it. Because even if someone is completely abrasive, there's still something that you can learn from their perspective. Every complaint, even the unreasonable, ridiculous ones, you can learn from. Because when we are above reproach, when we're so good, when we're so thorough, when we're so proactive that no one can possibly say that we failed, that we dropped the ball, when we have redundancies built in and there's accountabilities built in, nobody gets to say that we failed because there's no possibility for failure because there's always a check back and a check back and a check back. Annoy people with kindness. Annoy people with proactivity if necessary. Hey, I'm just checking back. I wanted to make sure that everything was good on that service request to your satisfaction. Is there anything else we need to help you with? Even if it's an automated thing that's set up in your CRM with a little check back with a text message or an email, 
hey, I showed that our service request for X was marked as complete. Are you totally satisfied here? Is there anything else you need us to do? If not, no need to reply. But if you still need us to do something, please get back to us because we are considering the matter closed. Even if it's something as simple as that. Every single request, I mean, excuse me, every single um, complaint, every single negative thing that comes to you needs your attention, needs your staff's attention. And the third thing is we've got to be low, going after the low hanging fruit. When we're, we're in the middle of preparing for annual planning right now, we're in the middle of looking forward to 2025 and we're starting to build out the structure, the framework of our business plan for 2025. And one of the things that I'm discovering, unfortunately, is that we really, really suck at rounding out accounts. The number of accounts where we have one policy is staggering. It's almost 50% of our accounts have a single policy. Now, granted, we work a lot with real estate investors. We have more than 25,000 properties insured at, at risk. Well, we don't really actively go after those people. We are much more of an inbound shop. So when things come in, when things are requested of us, we handle the request. We put a bow on top of the request, make sure they get their policy, make sure they get their documents, make sure their lender's happy on the real estate side. And that's really it. We don't really touch them other than to say, are you good? You got what you need? Cool. Thanks. Have a nice day. And we're on to the next one because our real estate team is so high volume, we're not really circling the wagons. We are not going after low-hanging fruit. We're not asking for cross-sell opportunities. We're not asking for the other properties they may own. We're not asking for referrals to the channel partners that we may very well be able to work with. Because for every real estate investor, they've got a real estate agent that works with investors. They've got a lender that works with investors. They've got a title company that works with investors. They probably have an accountant, a banker, a CPA, a financial advisor. There's a lot of people uh, that we can be talking to. An attorney. We're not asking for the rounding out opportunities. And we're not asking for reviews. We're not asking for referrals. There's so many things that people would probably be perfectly happy to give us if we asked for them, but we're not asking. So as we approach the end of 2024 and we, we get ready for planning and we get ready for a strong Q1 of 2025, I just want to encourage you, think about how much money is sitting in your existing agency, the existing accounts you're already working with. For you personal lines folks out there, how many of your accounts are rounded? How many of your accounts have you had a home, auto, umbrella, life, toys conversation with? How many of your people have a, a specialty auto policy, whether it's a camper, a, you know, a motorcycle, um, a, a fifth wheeler? I'm trying to sound like a personal lines agent here. I haven't done this in a long time. Sorry if I seem a little bit scratchy. Uh, what are the opportunities to make sure that you're asking about everything? We don't do life insurance at risk. Well, right now we're looking into that in the future. What about, what about asking the life insurance conversation? Have you had a life insurance conversation with every existing client in your agency? Do you know who has it and who doesn't? If they have it, do they have enough? Have you looked at the real estate stuff? Hey, do you own any investment in real estate? Do you have any rental properties? Do you have any flips or whatever? So give me, um, give me the opportunity to just call you out a little bit because I'm calling myself out here as I, I just you know, admitted that we really suck at rounding out the accounts. Focus on the low-hanging fruit. You'd probably be surprised at how strongly you can finish Q4 and how strongly you can start Q1. And that is it for this week's episode. What to do when you come under attack. It is first and foremost, look at your process and make sure that you're closing the circuit. Make sure that you are doing everything proactive, everything for increased accountability to make sure that everything is happening the way that it's supposed to and eliminate the possibility for future attacks to come. And the second part is don't ignore the attack. Don't brush it off. Don't discount it as someone who's unreasonable, unpleasant, unlikable, whatever it happens to be. You can learn something from everybody. I certainly did. And I, I don't think that we deserved to have the attack that we did. I don't think it was reasonable. I don't think it was accurate. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. The person who felt that way felt that way. And we have to own our part in the process and make sure that there's no opportunity for people to attack us 
for anything other than as a complete fabrication. If someone's just going to straight up lie about you, they're going to lie about you. There's not really anything you can do about that. But if someone is coming to you, if it's a client, a channel partner, attacking you for something that they think you did wrong, that's what we're talking about, folks. And finally, the low-hanging fruit. Where can you extract additional revenue from existing relationships? You'll probably be surprised with how many of those wins are sitting inside your existing book. And that's it for this episode of the Agency Freedom Podcast. Make it a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, drop me a line if there's anything that I can help you with. Podcast at jamesjenkins.com. And we'll catch you next time. Y'all take care.